So did Toro sell out when they made this 60 volt electric lawnmower? Well, I bought it, tested it, tried it out, and I'm gonna let you know what I think. So Toro's been around since like the dawn of time. There's a good chance your granddad used a Toro mower or maybe even your granddad's dad has used a Toro mower. They've been over, around for over a hundred years, but the majority of that has been in the gas space. And now they've joined the avalanche of brands, either joining the electric lawn tool space or quitting. I'm looking at you, Honda. So this is an iconic American brand, you know, changing things up. It's kind of like Ford putting out the Ford Lightning. It's just a little weird. We're just like watching to see what happens. But this is a pretty big deal. So I'm gonna put this thing together, talk about some of the key features of this tool, do some runtime tests and charge time tests. And I've used this quite extensively over the past couple of weeks. And you're going to want to stick around for some of the runtime tests because they were interesting for sure. And I'll talk about some of the pros and cons of this tool and ultimately whether the pros outweigh the cons and ultimately whether or not I'd recommend you spend your hard earned money on this tool. Ugh. All right, let's crack her open. All right guys, now that we got that thing put together and I have used it for a couple weeks, I am going to walk you through some of the key features of this tool. Skip over some of that ad jargon. Honestly, if you Googled this, the Toro Smart or Super Recycler, you'd get a whole bunch of ad nonsense, words that I'm like, I don't even know what that means. So I'm gonna let you know from my perspective what some of the key features are, some of the things that I think you should know before you buy it, moving from top down. So up at the handle, I'm gonna work all the way down the mower. So up here at the top of the mower, a lot of these electric brands these days are using kind of like this as like a dashboard where you'll have a light indicator letting you know how much battery is left on your onboard battery or you can turn on the lights here or press the turbo button here. There's none of that functionality on this Toro Super Recycler. Check some of their other models online as well. It really doesn't look like they've gone into that space with their with their mowers. Up here is pure functionality. There's no fluff about it up here. So to get this mower up and running, just press down the bar here and then press the blue button at the same time and you'll cut the mower on. There is a good bit of wind up there. And then to propel it forward, it's kind of got this personal pace technology. So it telescopes in. So when you push it down, it'll lurch forward and engage that rear wheel drive system and push the mower forward. I've got some opinions on that one too that I'll share with you later on. It sits atop like a steel frame right here. You've got some knobs right here that you can press down, fold. If you want to store it like that, then you flip those ends and it'll lock in place and you can store it in an upright position if, if you want to. And then now just working down the mower from these storage knobs or whatever you want to call it, here's the clippings deflector adjustment button, I guess you'll call it. You have to compress the button down right here and then roll it forward if you want to go change to a bag setting and then go back the reverse direction if you want to recycle the grass clippings. It doesn't come stocked with a side discharge chute. You can go on their website and get a side discharge chute. I don't know why they wouldn't just include it in the box, but they, they don't, I guess, because it's a super recycler and they want you to recycle your grass clipping, I guess. I think it's like 14 gauge or something, steel deck. It's a, it's really feels honestly really durable. There are height adjustment settings that go range from one inch, so you can cut it really, really low, or you can cut it all the way up to four inches. You can drop it down obviously like that, how you would most any other mower if you're adjusting the height setting. And then there's each individual wheel has its own setting. Some people like that, some people don't like that. And then moving on to the overall motor mount, this is a 60 volt battery. According to Toro, you get 40 minutes of runtime. Again, we're gonna do a runtime test. Disclaimer, I've used this for a couple weeks now and the results of that will be, you'll find interesting. So make sure you stick around for that as well. So to insert or remove the battery, you just open the battery housing. This is honestly a pretty flimsy, cheap feeling housing, but you slide it down in there. If you can figure it out and you click it in, it'll click in place and you'll know that it is in place. And that 22 inch steel deck has the Vortex technology, supposedly, but if you can see through there, what do you see on the other side of this mesh screen right here? That's just the deck itself. I mean, if I took this thing off, the majority of this would all be just red metal as well. If you flip it upside down up in here, you can kind of see a little space where air is supposed to go up. But I tell you what, I have held my hand right there and I could not feel an ounce of air coming through that. That is what we call, ladies and gentlemen, ad jargon. And all of this finally sits atop a 10 inch rear wheel and an eight inch front wheel. Those are actually pretty 
sturdy wheels, I was not impacted significantly by bumps in my yard. And if you've been following my channel at all, you know that I struggle with moles. So my mowers can bounce a lot because of the mole ruts that I have in my yard. And this one honestly handled them really, really well. So now that we talked about some of the key features of this tool, now let's roll into some of these runtime tests. But before we do, if you don't mind, if you find this video interesting or you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to throw it in the comment section, but also smash that subscribe button if you don't mind. It sends a clear signal to YouTube that people are interested in this type of content and really, really help me out if you did. So if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, maybe even smash the like button too. That'd be cool. So it's 325. It's been a minute since I cut my lawn. I'm going to run it, see how long the battery lasts. Pretty, pretty normal mowing conditions. All right guys, so I was able to get about 25 to 30 minutes of runtime, enough to cut the front part of my lawn and then the back perimeter and then a couple passes in my backyard. So about 25 to 30 minutes of runtime. They advertise it said up to 40 minutes. So it was maybe a little bit less than favorable conditions. I've got a pretty dense turf, but it should be pretty realistic compared to what most people are cutting. So now that we know how long you can cut your lawn for using this about, I would say realistically a quarter of an acre, maybe a little bit less than a quarter of an acre. Now we're going to see how long it takes that battery to charge when fully dead. All right guys, so it's 137. I have a completely dead 6 amp hour battery. I'm going to throw it on the charger, see how long it takes to fully charge. So it's 401 and the battery is unfortunately still charging. So it is 526. And if you remember, I put that thing on at like 130. So it took four hours for that 6 amp hour battery to fully charge. Not super efficient. All right, so some of the pros and cons to the Toro Super Recycler 60 volt. Pros being really, 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 really good cut quality. There were not a lot of missed blades. Truthfully, I've reviewed a lot of electric mowers and this has been honestly one of the best quality cuts that I've gotten out of a mower. And then that ease of setup. It took me five minutes and five minutes is maybe a stretch to set it up. It was one of the easiest lawn mowers I've ever set up. And then the ease of use. It was a really easy to use mower. It was pretty intuitive in terms of how to turn it on and use it. Like you just walk and that's basically it. Even I can figure that one out. All right, but moving on to the cons. I feel bad doing this, but I gotta be completely honest with you guys. The runtime, obviously atrocious. It's advertised as 40 minutes, like up to 40 minutes. Well, yeah, maybe on Mars where there's no gravity and no resistance. I got maybe 25 minutes of runtime, perhaps potentially 30 minutes of runtime, but definitely not enough to get my entire lawn done. And some of these other mowers that I've reviewed have laughed at that challenge. But this one, I could get my front yard done and a little bit of my backyard done. And then that charge time test. Four hours to charge a battery and then you get 30 minutes of runtime? Are you kidding me? That's horrible. And that personal pace thing, man. I get it that it wants to like respond to your walking patterns and maybe you gotta go up a hill and push up. But honestly, it just felt like I was lurching forward and lurching back over and over and over again when I was using this mower. The personal pace thing to me, and then that Vortex technology, I talked about it earlier. That's the definition of ad jargon and just something they wanted to slap on the mower to say it does something different compared to other mowers. There was virtually no airflow coming through that grate on the mower. That's one that honestly grinds my gears and why we started the lawn review. Because you go down an aisle at Home Depot or Lowe's and you're trying to pick between two mowers and you're like, oh, Vortex technology, maybe I'll spend an extra 50 bucks and buy that mower. And it's, it's garbage. It doesn't even mean anything. I honestly can't stand that kind of stuff. And then I think it was just a complete miss on Toro's part not to put a battery light indicator. Maybe they don't want to remind you that your battery is going beep, 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 and it's going to run out in like 20 seconds. So maybe that's why they did it. Maybe they're a whole lot smarter than me. But normally with these electric mowers these days, they've got a pretty sophisticated little dashboard right here where you're holding on to it. You can press a turbo button, headlight button, or, you know, check the status of your the battery life. But this one had nothing, no bells and whistles at all. This is a lawnmower and that is it. <laughs> so ultimately, does the Toro mower get the TLR stamp of approval? And honestly, I'm going to say no. We're going to give it the denied button. There are a whole lot better mowers that I've reviewed, like the Greenworks mower or the obviously the Milwaukee mower. That thing's amazing that I would recommend you spend your money on over this super recycler. This thing is, I was very, very underwhelmed with this. I would not recommend that you go out and buy it personally for me. If you have a smaller lawn, maybe a quarter of an acre, I could see a place for this, but it's honestly like pretty high price it's like 650 bucks with a two-year tool warranty and a three-year battery warranty like they didn't wow me with anything so this is just my personal opinion but i'm gonna say no 
But if you want to see a review of a mower that I would recommend, check out this video right here. But thanks for checking out this week's video. And until next time, keep cutting. Peace.